Once upon a time, there was a babysitting bird. Let's call him Crow. He was an authorised and accredited caregiver, much in demand on a Friday night, much admired by London parents. The telly went off and Crow suggested a game. You two boys, he said, must each here on the floor build a model of your mother, just as you remember her, and whichever of you builds the best model will win. The prize is this, he said, stroking their shampooed hair. The best model I'll bring to life. A living mother to tuck you up in bed. And so the boys set to it. The one son went for drawing, furiously concentrating like a little waist-high fresco painter, scrabbling hands and knees on the scaffold. Heavy nasal sighing as he adjusted the eyes, scrapped them, started again, working his way down, happy with the hands, happy with the legs. The second son went for assemblage, a model of the woman made from cutlery, stationery, toys, ribbons, buttons, books, clicking and tossing as he worked his way around the mosaic mum. Happy with the head, happy with the height, and stop, said Crow. They are both extraordinary. You've got her smile. You've captured her posture. Her shoulders were hunched to that exact degree. And the boys couldn't wait to find out who had won. Which one? Which mum? But Crow started hopping, avoiding their gaze, suppressing a giggle and turning away. Crow, which one of these fake mums has won us a real one? And Crow was quiet, laughing no more. Crow, don't be funny. Let's have a real mummy. And Crow started crying. And the boys cooked Crow in a very hot oven until he was nothing but cells. This is Crow's bad dream.
I couple hell. Hold, hold my heart. And you, my sinews grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee. I, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe, remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all pressures past that youth and observation copy there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. My tables, meet it is, I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word, it is a Jew, a Jew, Remember me. I have sworn. This recurring dream, I dream. I'm inside something warm and dark. <laughs> I can't tell where I end or begin because whatever is pressing against me also is me. <laughs> I'm everything and nothing. <laughs> atomized in the dark but then there's this sound it starts quietly just a little scratching and then it gets louder and louder, and it sounds like metal on china, like forks on plates, like hundreds and hundreds of people's empty cutlery banging and scraping on plates. And then the light comes, and whatever was keeping me still isn't there anymore. My arms flail slick with something, only they're not my arms, they're wings. And whenever I try to scream, all I can hear is this rasping screech. <sighs> and just once, when I woke from this dream, there was a feather in my mouth. <laughs> Must have been from my pillow. <laughs> a 
Have you ever dreamt anything like that? 